Welcome back to The Social here on TalkSport 2 with me, Harry Simeu and Rory Jennings. We're going to get stuck into Liverpool versus Manchester City very, very shortly. Is it a title decider? Uh, we're going to do Twitter Corner. We'll react to Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's interview with the overlap. And from 5pm, it's Sparta versus Liverpool in the Europa League. And we'll bring you that live right here on Talk Sport 2. Rory, simple question. Does the winner of this heavyweight clash on Sunday between Liverpool and Manchester City, the last ever meeting between Klopp and Guardiola as Liverpool and City bosses at Anfield, does the winner of that, is it as simple as the winner of that goes on to win the Premier League title? It sounds like an oversimplification, but yes. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Arsenal fans will probably have something to say about that, but... I, I, do you know what? Maybe maybe what you said is a little bit hyperbolic, but if you take it the other way, I think it makes it true. Whoever loses won't win the league. Okay. Whoever loses will not win the league. So it's a knockout, effectively. I, th- I believe if, if Liverpool beat City, it's going to take something ridiculous for them to come back because the margins are just so small. There is no room for error. The three sides at the top of the league, on the points tallies that they're on, the goal difference that they've got, it, there's just no room for manoeuvre. You've got to assume that Arsenal win. Arsenal have a very kind fixture. It's been great for them in the fixture list because Arsenal will beat Brentford. Arsenal will be top of the league when this game starts. So we the hope. pressure is massively on. Arsenal will be. So the pressure is massively on these two teams. Whoever loses, I just can't see a way back from here. See, I look at this a little bit differently because the following... In the following round of Premier League fixtures, Arsenal go to Manchester City. So I'm looking at this as two fixtures that are going to have a big say in where the title ends up. I think that Arsenal need to take advantage of the fact that both or one of these two sides are going to drop points Mm. this weekend. So they need to beat Brentford. And, you know, a draw in the Liverpool City game would be ideal. But then Arsenal go to Manchester City in the next round and obviously then Liverpool have an an opportunity to to do something significant and make their mark. And I I just think the outcome of these two games is going to be so so important rather than just this weekend. Well, yeah. Well, if you you could sort of imagine the results of both. So imagine a world where Manchester City beat Liverpool at Anfield. They've got a pitiful record at Anfield. They don't win there. I think they've won two of 32. Yeah, it's their worst It's their worst away ground in the Premier League by a mile. So imagine if Man City do go and win at Anfield. It, it's not only about the points. It's not... In fact, it's the points are arguably like less important than the statement and the noise that it makes. Going to Anfield and winning in the context would just be massive. If Man City do that and then they beat Arsenal the following week, I don't see any way back to, to catching City. If City drop points in both games, which isn't beyond the realms of possibility, certainly seen them dropping points at, at Anfield. I'm not sure I can see them losing, but I certainly can see them getting beat. Uh, sorry, I can certainly see them dropping points. <sighs> then it's up to Arsenal to go to the Etihad and almost achieve the impossible. But they have already beaten them this season. They have already beaten them in the Charity Shield, which isn't isn't as important, but it's certainly not to be ignored. I do, do you know? Do you know? It's rare, isn't it? This doesn't happen often. But I often make mistakes with my predictions. But I know what I think. With this, I have absolutely no idea. You know, in terms of where the Premier League title ends up. Yeah. Depending on my mood, it almost changes because you think, okay, Manchester City have already won. You know, they've already won three in a row. No one's won four in a row. So they're going to make history on that because that's what they do. They make history, so they're going to win it. And then you look at what's going on at Liverpool and you think, okay, they are defying science almost, what they're achieving. It's it's ludicrous how brilliant they've been. And then you see and then you see what Arsenal have done. And off the back of Arsenal losing those two consecutive London derby defeats, you know when Arsenal were beat by, it was it was West Ham at home, which was huge. It was the first time Arsenal had lost at home. And then they went away to Fulham. They took the lead and they lost. You're like, okay, that's title done. Look at what they have done this year. I have no idea. Like, genuinely, can you... I'm asking you to do something that's probably impossible, Harry, but can you remove your loyalty and love of Arsenal and it help me explore this title race just through the lens of neutrality and as a football fan? Like, what do you think happens? If I take my Arsenal hat off, I make City the favourites, I yeah. have Arsenal in second, and I have Liverpool in third. Now, that sounds crazy, 
because Liverpool uh, are performing and currently, as we're speaking, they're top of the table. But I think their performances are not at the level that they need to be. And I worry, well, if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd worry right. that it's not sustainable. Well, they're nicking in- results in the way that they're nicking results, you can't do that, can you? You I, can't do yeah. that. Arsenal tried to do it last year. Nicking results at Villa Park and all that. And ultimately it stops. I think you can do it once in a while. Yeah. I think you need to have that in your locker when it's not going your way and you're not playing great. But I don't think you can build mm. a sustainable title charge on nicking late winners and hoping for a bit of fortune. Their injury list is a big problem as well. Mm. Um, you know, I expect Mo Salah to probably start the game at the weekend. But how fit can he be? He's played, I think, half an hour in the last mm. eight weeks. So... I would put Liverpool as as my least favourites at the moment. Not because I don't rate them, not because I don't think Jurgen Klopp's a great manager. It's nothing to do with that. I just look at the way it's all kind of setting up. And although I think that whoever wins this game, you know, aside from having the points advantage, gains a huge psychological boost, Mm. I don't think that it is that decisive. Like I I don't think it is whoever wins this is going to go on and win the league. But whoever loses it doesn't win the league. Is that fair? I don't think so. Because I think there's still so many points to play for. And I think all of these sides... What are we, what are we left? 11, 12 games left? Yeah, talk, if it's 11 games, you're talking, what, 33 points? But at this level, you know you know when you last saw your team win a league, or when Chelsea even last won a league, which is not that long ago, points weren't worth what they're worth now. But they were two-horse races. This is a three-horse race, and but, I think that makes a big difference. But we've got into a situation now, due largely to the brilliance of Guardiola and Klopp, but also because of Mikel Arteta this year, the value of the draw is gone. The point, you know, you know, when Mourinho was winning Leeds with Chelsea, good point, good away point. There's no such thing as a good point now in the title race because the points tally that you're going to have to accrue to win the league is something in excess of 92, I reckon, right? That used to make you great, not that long ago. Like, I remember having an argument about Antonio Conte's Chelsea team that managed to accrue 93. And my argument, we weren't a great team. But I was saying that we're a great team because we hit over 90. I went, look at anyone that's got over 90, they're a great. Not over 90 now won't win you the league, which basically means if you do lose, you, you know the days of the days of losing. But that's so, the bar that Manchester City have set. Yeah. That is the bar that and Manchester Liverpool, City have set. And, and now and Arsenal. Liverpool, and now Arsenal fair, last season as well. But I, I, I just think that because there are three sides in the equation, mm. there is more margin for error than maybe there was two, three seasons ago. So I think that the fact that there is still then 33-odd points to play for, I think that is going to come into it. Arsenal have to go away to Spurs. Arsenal have to go away to Manchester United on the second-to-last mm. game of the season. You know, Liverpool have to play uh, their Merseyside rivals. They've Tottenham's got, whole they've, season at some point is going to... Not yet. They've got, enough, they've got their own mm. things to worry about. They've got a massive game this weekend and whatever else. But, you know, at some point, their season... They may have Champions League qualification sewn up by that game, yep. or they may have Champions League qualification and impossibility by that point. Their whole season will revolve around stopping you. Stopping even. Arsenal. Mm. Yeah, it will. Whole season. Um, just very, very quickly before we break, uh, Trent Alexander Arnold has been talking, Rory, um, about the fact that, in his opinion, although City, and I quote, have probably been more successful. Sorry, Trent, but they, they have, they been, have been, more been more successful. successful. Um, he says, Our trophies will mean more to us and our fan base because of the situations at both clubs financially. What do you make of that? And the reason I ask you is because as a Chelsea fan, you would have faced a lot of this. Mm. People turning their nose up at your achievements because your club spent a lot of money. Do you know, whatever he thinks, whatever he thinks is the reality, it may be the reality now. It may be the reality for Liverpool fans of today. I don't know. But what we do know is that history is written by the winners. And in 100 years, when we look back on this era... This people who are who have witnessed it and they know how brilliant Klopp's team have been. Ultimately, the history books will just tell you that Liverpool had one league, and if in the Manchester City era, in the way that Manchester United had their era. Look, Arsenal, Arsenal were great, and we lived in. We know how great Arsenal were, but that era belongs to Manchester United. There is no spin that makes that decade not a Manchester United decade. We are currently living in Manchester City's world. And Liverpool are just playing in it.